The Kong Show, Japan Today, and Inside Digital Magazine present movie reviews for films opening this weekend. If you're in Japan, thinking about a movie this coming weekend, or if you're in another country, thinking about renting a movie, you'll want to listen to this as we have some very critical reviews by Metropolis film critic Don Morton. And that's Mr. Morton seated right there. Where are you, Don, and what are you sitting on? Well, that's my Earth Roamer. It's a four wheel drive camping car, solar panels, and、uh, that's what I've been living in summers and winters for the past six years. And where are we catching you right now? Right now, I'm in California's Silicon Valley, about a stone's throw away from where they're building the new Apple Computer headquarters. All right, let's get right to the movies opening here in Japan this week, starting with this one called Exodus Gods and Kings. Religious movie? What do you think?、Hmm. This is Ridley Scott's biblical action movie. It's visually stunning, as you might expect. However, the pace is lurching, the acting is uneven, there's huge gaps in the narrative, and it feels rushed even at two and a half hours. And there's little emotional impact. And worst thing of all, when God appears, he's a bratty little kid. What do you mean by that? He's played by a 10 year old actor, a pouty little actor who says, I'm going to send plagues against Egypt, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> So, you mean we actually see God in this movie? We do. Wow. Yeah, God won't be happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue on. It's occasionally entertaining, but usually unintentionally. Did this movie remind you of Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments? Well, it's inevitable that it does, because it's the story of Moses. But I also kept thinking about the Mel Brooks movie, In the History of the World, Part One, and I couldn't help but kind of <laughs> chuckle a few times. Christian Bale plays Moses, and he can do almost anything, but this indifferent Moses is where the almost part comes in. For a biblical epic, this is soulless, and it's more than a little dull. At 150 minutes long. Date movie? Oh. Golly, don't even make me think about that. Moving on, the next movie here is called Wild Card. This is the second time William Goldman has adapted his novel called Heat. He did it once before in 1986 and produced a clunker also called Heat, starring Burt Reynolds. And it, not to be confused with a much better 1995 Al Pacino Robert De Niro flick, also called Heat. Anyway, this time the rewrite is presumably to fit the material to Jason Statham's tough guy sensibilities. He plays a hardened Las Vegas bodyguard with a gambling problem, and he gets in trouble with the mob, and he bets all or nothing for his freedom, etc., etc. What's good about this movie? Well, there's a couple of very well choreographed samurai style one against many fight scenes, but、uh, mostly it's a fairly forgettable pseudo noir effort. Next movie opening in Tokyo this coming weekend seems to be something for geriatrics. It's called Elsa and Fred, and it is a geriatric love story. And there's room for those. But the filmmakers should understand that when you're able to sign such great old pros like Christopher Plummer and Shirley MacLaine, you really have to give them more to do. It follows a predictable arc. Plummer's a misanthropic old widower just waiting to die until he meets his slightly dotty neighbor who makes up a lot of stuff and begins to enjoy life again, etc. Does the Pfizer chemical company have any product placements in this movie? No, actually, the main、uh, scene. With any sort of、uh, pills in it is when he flushes them all down the toilet. <laughs> This movie features several excerpts from La Dolce Vita, which is Elsa's favorite movie.、Mm. And the filmmakers, they should know they're in trouble when these are the most captivating moments in the movie. It's cute in spots, if predictable, but no surprises and not much momentum. Date movie? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if you're dating someone 70. <laughs> The next movie opening in Japan this coming weekend seems to be perfectly timed for the upcoming Super Bowl. It's called Draft Day, and it's about that day of the year when all the pro teams draft promising college players. It's an Ivan Reitman sports procedural, but it's for people who read the football news between seasons, people that are interested in all the front office wheelings and dealings and tradings. It's a low key Kevin Costner is the perfect guy to play. Cleveland Browns general manager Sonny Weaver. As the movie opens, Sonny is having a bad day. His legendary dad died a few weeks earlier. His office sports wonk girlfriend, played by Jennifer Garner, has just told him she's pregnant, and the NFL draft pick kicks off in 12 hours. The team owner, played by Frank Langella, wants a splashy Heisman Trophy winner as the first pick. The irritating head coach spits disagreement with everything Kevin says. Yeah, it's, it's a little. 
It's a little slow. It's uh, it's the same time convoluted and simplistic. Call it Moneyball Light. Uh, it's very confusing. The screenings in Japan. This is interesting. Screenings in Japan are preceded with a little PowerPoint presentation trying to explain the ins and outs of uh, draft day draft picks. You got to love it. I wish it were in English because I could have used a little more knowledge of it going in. <laughs> it's kind of like an NFL infomercial, and most people will find it a little slow paced. But it's genially diverting, and it finally gains a sense of urgency during the final 20 minutes. No sports are played. It's not a sports movie. It's a, it's a sports office movie. All right, the Oscars are going to be coming up very soon, Don. Do you have any picks you can tell us about? Well, of the four movies that are open this week, I think the only one that has the remotest shot at an Oscar is Exodus, Gods and Kings, and that'll be for some sort of special effects. What, costumes, that sort of thing? No, actually, there's some aerial shots of ancient Egyptian cities that are quite good. They did have the pyramids in that movie, right? Yes. Was it shot on location, do you know? No, I believe it was shot in Morocco. Don Morton, you'll be back to join us again next week, and you will provide us with some of your Oscar picks, right? All right. Don Morton, film critic from Metropolis. Where you can read all his reviews. Thank you very much. Thank you.